Flint knapping is a process of making a stone tool with a sharp edge for cutting and tasks like that. Um, some of the materials that we start with obviously are types of flint that are, have to be dug out of the ground or sometimes found eroded in uh, creek beds and things like this. Primitive people for thousands of years have been doing flint knapping in every continent except Antarctica all over the world. Uh, it's the thing that kind of got us to where we are now. So what we start with here is basically a rock, some type of a flint-like material. Um, a chalcedony, an agate, petrified wood, or agatized coral, uh, chert, jaspers, chalcedonies, um, obsidians, and dacites. Um, so uh, lots and lots of different materials. Most of them are igneous rocks. So, uh, and what I have here, this is a piece of agatized coral. This is from South Georgia. And that at one day was an ancient little piece of coral that dried up and turned into agate. So you have this outside of this rock, that's called the cortex. And then this inside, that's the flint. That's the material type of stone that you're looking for. So primitive people would go along and find these rocks and take another hammer stone usually. This is just another type of a rock, usually not a piece of the flint material because that could break in your hand and cause you to get a boo-boo and everything. Um, so these are the hammer stones. These are the raw materials that uh, I am taking out of the ground, different types of flints, cherts, and in this case here, the uh, agatized coral. Uh, they're all from uh, pretty much the, the southeast of Georgia. Bifaces are called bifaces because they're worked off of two sides. There's also unifaces where it might be a flake or a big spall like this, and then that would just be worked like a rough chopping edge. Unifaces were usually not very well made items. Uh, they were tools to just get a quick little cutting task done. Based. Nice padded piece of leather here that I've got. And we will take this piece of stone right here. This is all this black cortex. This came out of a creek off the Savannah River. Reason I'm using the hammer stone is it's really heavy and has a lot of mass. So it can take off a big chunk of this stone. And then I'll use smaller hammer stones and lighter wooden or antler billets um, to work this in a more controlled fashion, not so much, you know, just brute strength. So I'll take my hammer stone. Well, there would be one flake that could come off of there. There's a nice little flake for an arrowhead. And all these small pieces that are coming off, they're not waste or trash. Um, those can all be used in making smaller things. And that whole stone will be reduced in this way. So what I'm going to do now is you'll see me, instead of using this larger hammer stone for knocking off big pieces of that harder stone, uh, now I will go to like a little bit smaller hammer stones, right about like here, because I don't need a lot of weight. This is more just delicately. I'm just going to go along and trim this edge. See how it's like rough and waggy, you know, real, real jaggery and irregular. I'm just going to go along here and make it a little more regular. Right now, this edge is really, really thin and sharp, so it's, it's fragile. It's not going to be able to take a big impact from this antler baton here and detach a flake to make it thinner and start getting this going where we're wanting it to. So what I need to do is abrade or grind this edge. So this knocks off small pieces. We want to have long flakes come across here so that it begins to thin this material down. So you can see how when that antler struck, there is your large flake that came off. And then that right there will make an arrowhead also.